use it. Uh, and once you get a Bible, if you'll please stand, Matthew chapter number 7, we're going to read at tonight. Uh, I'm going to kind of do a Bible study uh, slash preaching, amen. And uh, you say, well, what's, what's going to be the main thing? I don't really know. Uh, there's a lot in this passage, and I just felt like we pre preach uh, exactly what the Lord would have us to do. And I've got this in my Bible reading. Uh, and just kind of investigate it a little bit more, and I feel like the Lord would have us to do this and see this. And so uh, pray for me, and I'll pray for you to get what God gave me, and I'll pray, if you'll pray, that God would help me to give you what He gave me, because it's, uh, it's not hard to get caught up in some of this stuff. And so I want the Lord to just tell us exactly what to say in this passage of Scripture. Matthew chapter number 7, if you'll please stand, if you're able to stand, in honor of the reading of the Word of God. The Bible says, in verse number 1, Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mold out of thine, thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of, the, out of thine eye, own eye, and then sh thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mold of thy brother's, brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your, ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread you will give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish you will give him a serpent? Let's do it now. If ye... Then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask Him? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law of the prophets. I'm going to pray in just a second. I've heard a lot of messages out of Matthew 7, those first 12 verses. And I want you to understand, this is the end of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus began in verse number 5, and He preached the Beatitudes, and He preached one of the greatest messages to His disciples and the people that were around. And this is the end. And if you're not careful, I've heard people, people preach these, these texts. But these are all in context. Uh, nothing is out of order here. God just didn't decide to tell us to start praying for anything. If we ask, He'll give it to us. And if we seek it, we'll find it. If we knock, He'll open it. He didn't just throw that in in the middle of, it, of something just to kind of change the subject. This is all in subject. And I want to talk to you tonight about judging. You say, I don't think we ought to judge. Well, I think that we ought to judge sometimes. Well, Bible says here, judge not. Well, I'm going to explain that to you. And I want you to see some things because there's a lot of Christians who will say, I don't think you ought to judge me. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Well, I am sure that I am to judge them. Uh, and, and you are too. And you'll see what I'm saying in just a second. But we've got to be careful when we judge people. And God is talking about having a critical spirit here that we think that we're not like them and that they need to get it together and, and when, what is wrong with them. And he says some things in this passage I want to get to tonight. And I want to help you tonight. And I think God is all over this message. I think God can help us. Let's pray. We'll have another song. And just for a little bit, I want to give you what God gave me. And I hope that we can leave here different tonight. We're going to look at quite a bit of scripture from different verses in the Bible to kind of show you what's going on here just in the beginning. And then we're going to preach just for a little bit at the end. And, and, and so let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I love you. And I just ask you once again, Lord, to just give me wisdom. Father, would you cleanse me of my sins if there's anything, Lord? Would you 
uh, help me to be empowered by the Holy Spirit of God that I might be able to say exactly what you'd like to be said tonight. Father, would you help each one of us, Lord, uh, in here tonight to leave here different because you met with us through the Word of God, the preached and teached Word of God. And Lord, that you help us in a special way. God, we need you tonight. We cannot do anything without you. Please help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. Um, uh, I kind of picked this song secondly for I was going to sing a different song, but I was sitting there just thinking about the song and how um, a lot of people think of this song as a kiddish song because, you know, you have to stand up for Jesus, don't be ashamed and stuff. And I was just sitting there and I was saying, it's so ironic because you go to Christian school and you have to stand up for your Christianity. And, you know, not to be ashamed. And so many people, they fall down all the time because they don't stand up for God. And I was just thinking about how if we don't stand up for Jesus, that we're not going to make it anywhere. We could just fall anytime. Somebody could just say, hey, you want to go somewhere or listen to this song? And you're just, if you don't stand up for God, it's just you're just going to fall. And you're just not going to make it anywhere. And I, just, I was just thinking about that sin over there, my heart pounding, and I was about to cry. Because, you know, it's an amazing thing to live for God. Amen. And, you know, he loved you. It says right here, he loved you on the rugged cross. He died for us. And it's so sad because a lot of Christians don't stand up for him. Even at Christian school, it's Christian school, people don't stand up for him. And it's really scary because maybe they're just not saved or something. And I was just thinking, like, if we don't stand up, who's going to show the little kids? how to stand up, you know, I'm just a teenager, but those little kids really do look up to, to teenagers and right. try to see what we would do so they could do it too, and just have the song, I was just thinking about how good God really is and how much we should stand up for Him, even if it's the hardest thing we could ever do, just to just stand up and not be ashamed.
Matthew chapter number 7. Are we on the Matthew chapter number 7. Talking about judging people and what the text has here. And, and I, I made this statement that God doesn't change subjects in verse 6 when he says, Give not that which is holy under the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample under the feet and turn again to rend you. Ask and it shall be given. And a lot of people preach those just those texts. They'll say, Turn your Bible to verse number 7 of Matthew 7, and they'll talk about prayer. And I think these are good principles in the book about prayer, but we have to look at the book in the context of what God wanted us to understand here. And, and the Bible's not just a bunch of verses thrown together and, and then you just read them like statements you'll read about authors where they'll, they'll have an author and they'll put all their statements that they read, that they said, and you'll look at them and just think, well, that was a good one and that was a good one. That's not what this is doing. This is talking about judging people. And I was going to title it, Judge or Not to Judge. And, and, and so I want you just to see just a little bit. Verse 1 says, Judge not that you be not judged. And, and listen to me, God is not talking about uh, making a statement or uh, coming to a conclusion about a person. When you look at people and you see sin on the outside, you can accurately say, that person is a drunk. They drink a lot, they wreck their lives, they're a drunk. And someone will say, well, I don't think you ought to judge them. No, no, we ought to judge them. We're calling them what they are. And what God is talking about here in verse number one is not calling it what it is because you can see the outside fruit of it. It's being careful not to have a, 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 a censorious or a, a censoring attitude, a pious attitude, or an attitude like, like we're better than them, or, or like we, we, that they deserve what they're getting. And, and God doesn't want us to be like that. We're the church. And if this ain't a place where people can come and be loved no matter what. And, and God loved us, and when we first came to these churches, everybody, including myself, people just loved me, and I did not deserve it. I still don't deserve it. But I'm not what I used to be. And so they did not say, don't sit next to me, sir. You're a, a filthy, uh, drunk, drug addict, whoremonger, somebody that steals, somebody that doesn't care about nobody but himself. They didn't do that. And, and they were not supposed to do that. But I want you to see some things about judging. And, and, and I wrote this statement down. The theme of this generation in America today is tolerance. We're supposed to tolerate everybody. And we're concerned our line we don't put up with anything and everything that comes down the pike. I got to tell you, I, I don't tolerate that statement well. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not for anything and everything. We have to measure our judging with the Bible. And so I'm going to preach tonight. I'm going to show you where it is okay to judge. Uh, because if it's measured against the Bible, we can accurately say what it is. Because the Bible speaks against it, or the Bible speaks for it. If they do it or if they're against it, we can judge what they are. Is everybody following me so far? Okay, and so we look at what God says. He goes, judge not that you be not judged. And we're told by other people, you shouldn't judge them. And so we have to understand in light of Scripture what God is saying here. So I got some verses together, and I want to look at these. These Scripture passages indicate... Uh, that the Lord uh, does not include uh, judging inside the church by the pastor. By me saying, hey brother, you're out of line. You shouldn't be doing that. You need to get that right. That is not what God is talking about here when he says judging. We are a church. Uh, I had a lady call me today, and I'm not even sure what she's talking about. She's visited with us on Sunday mornings a few times, and uh, she said some stuff, and then she said... Uh, you know, and by the way, I want to know why you won't baptize a person until they understand right perfect line with you. I'm not ever coming back. And I thought, well, I've never taught that. I've never told somebody that I wasn't going to baptize them. If I think they're saved, I'll baptize them. If I don't think they're saved, I will not baptize them. You say, well, isn't everybody saved if they ask God to save them? No. 
Uh, some people just they're just trying for a, a fire escape and doesn't care any more about God than anybody else. And if you don't care that you've hurt God and you're not looking to God and talking to God, a holy God, then you can't be saved. And so God is not in that prayer. And so this lady was upset and I didn't judge her. I was just, I don't know where she got that information from. I tried to call her several times today. She did not answer her phone. But. Scripture does say that we can do some judging when it comes down to the church. And so let me show you just a couple of them here. And, and let's look at them very quickly. Turn to Matthew chapter number 18. Matthew chapter number 18. Hurry as quickly as you can. Matthew 18, 16. Don't want you to get left behind tonight. <clears throat> Verse 15 says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, Thou hast gained thy brother. Now listen to me, church members. Listen to me, guys. Ladies, men, everybody. If you have a problem with somebody in this church, you do not go to somebody else and talk about them. You go directly to that person and say, Hey, I've got a problem. And, and, and you and me, I don't know if I've hurt you, you hurt me, however you're going to do it, you go to them. There isn't none of this, he said, she said, well, I heard this and I heard that. And I've heard some of that around our church the uh, last couple of months. And, and that's not why I'm preaching this. That's not why I went to this passage. I'm going to get to the passage. But I thought it was okay to tell you that. Listen, we always go to the person first. It's not fair. To if anybody comes to you and says, well, I don't think, Pastor, I'll be doing this. You grab my arm and say, let's go tell them. And, and I have no problem. If I'm wrong in the Bible, I'll apologize. And I'm looking at people... Right now, in this room, 95% of you have apologized face-to-face -face for stuff I've done. Uh, and I have no problem with that. But let's be careful not to talk about people. And, and, and understand that the Bible says we're not to talk about each other. Now look what verse 16 says. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he neglect to hear them, tell it to the church. But if you neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. What is that, Brother Burton? That's called judging somebody. That's called saying they wouldn't listen to us. They wouldn't get right with the Lord. And now we have to put them out of the church. And it is not. They cannot be a church member. They cannot. That's called judgment. That, it happens at church. We, uh, at, as church members, if you know that we have an active person in our role as a church member, and you see them down at the bar, or you see them gallivanting around with some woman, or you see them doing some things they shouldn't do, you ought to go to them and say, Hey, man, you need to get that right. You're a church member in our church, and you're making this church look bad. God's not for that. And then you ought to come to me and say, Pastor, here's what I did, Here, or here's what's going on. You say, Well, I don't, you don't want to judge anybody. Well, the Bible says we ought to take care of that and make it right for the church. And so that's one thing there. But let me show you just a few more about judge. Take your Bible and turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3. Now listen to me. This is not a corrective message at all. I had no mind of anything that I think I need to correct here. Uh, and I rarely preach those types of messages. I've maybe preached five or six corrective messages in our church when I thought, we got a problem, we need to preach on this. Uh, but tonight, I just want to show you some things about judging people. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3 and verse number 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which is received of us. Now this is Bible. If, if, if you're with a brother or a sister that ain't walking right and they're in the church and you, you are to withdraw from them and, and you are to, to judge them as, accordingly and that is the way it is. You say, well, I don't like that. Well, the world don't like it either. There's plenty of churches that won't judge you and let anything go on. Uh, that man, I was at his door the other day and I felt terrible telling him uh, he had a big old beer and, and he was sitting there and he's about 66 years old and I said, man, you ought to come to church sometime, sir. Right on your block, Carlos. Right at the end of the block, old black man, 66 years old, drink beer. And he said, uh, it was, I'm a member of the Word of Life Church. And I said, oh, really? I said, how long have you been a member there? He goes, 15 years. I said, you're a member of a church and you're out here just drinking on the street like this? And, and I probably, I, I wish I wouldn't have said that to him because it wasn't my job to correct him. Uh, but the truth is, 
He's walking disorderly. He's got no right to be a member of God's church at all when he's out in public doing that. Do church members fall? They do fall. And if they get right, Galatians 6 says to restore them. If a person has, has messed up, we've had it in our church where people have messed up, and they say, man, I want to get right with that, and we restore them immediately. And that's what God's plan is. But you have to make judgment sometimes. And, and so we see that. And then take your Bibles, it says, uh, uh, look what the first 15 says, Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. If they're disorderly, you don't count him as an enemy. And we've never done that to anybody that we've had to take off our church role. Man, I love everybody. Everybody that's ever come to this church, I love them dearly. But they can't be a church uh, member because we have to judge them uh, on that kind of stuff. You understand what I'm talking about, folks? I, I said it would be a Bible study, so stay with me. Titus chapter number 3. Titus chapter number 3. Titus chapter number 3, verse number 10. Titus 3, verse 10, the Bible says, A man that is a heretic, after the first and second admonition, reject. A man that is a heretic. What is a heretic, Brother Perkins? It's a person that does not acknowledge the Bible the right way and does not think that it is right to do what the Bible tells us to do. And they have false beliefs and they think that it should be a different way and they do not want to line up with the Bible. And the Bible says after a heretic, you go to him one time and you say, hey, brother, you know, you ought to try to get, get this thing right. And then after you go to him the second time, he says, after that, if they don't listen, then you reject them. You say, oh, man, that's strong words. Hey, listen, the Bible's strong, man. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just telling you, whether we, well, if you reject them, you're judging them. Absolutely. Now listen to me, guys, before we get all crazy in here. Love the sinner, but hate the sin. Amen. Folks need a church. People need to be able to come in here and hear the Word of God. And we don't send anybody out like that. But, as far as the members of this church, we've been very, very careful who we let become a member here because it's very holy and set apart to God. And God wants us to live for Him and to do right by Him and to get our lives in order and stay in order for Him because we are the one of the greatest things that God's we're the most expensive possession on the face of the earth. So what in the world we are? Yeah, the biggest price that was ever paid was paid for your soul and your, your spirit. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ died for you. That was the big, uh, Stuff is worth more by the amount of money that someone would pay for it. And so we were paid the ultimate price. He paid his life for us. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's judging. The Bible, Paul's, or, uh, Matthew says, judge not that you be not judged. But he's not talking about within the inside of the church. And so I want you to see that. Now, uh, take your Bible, turn to Matthew, well, back to Matthew 7. And the Lord didn't forbid individuals to make judgments regarding people that do wrong. You say, well, I don't know. Well, let's look at it. Matthew chapter number 7 and verse number 15. <clears throat> verse 15, Matthew 7, the Bible says, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You know who that is? He just visited this city. The ravening wolf in sheep's clothing. That's right, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or thistles? Listen, a, an apple tree is going to grow what? Apples. A Christian will grow Christian fruit. If there is no fruit, there's something wrong with the shoot. And if nothing's coming out of that, then there's something wrong there. And so, people, uh, beware of the false prophets. Beware of people doing wrong because we don't, man, we cannot allow that to come into our lives as Christians. We cannot fall into line with this Planned Parenthood. I can't believe the, the country's in such a mess on this stuff. Uh, and people are fighting against, uh, you know, the, the 50 million people that have been killed since 70, 1970. I mean, and I'm not against the lady that's had an abortion. She made a mistake. I've made many mistakes in my life. But I'm not for to keep it going and let them sell their body parts and, and different things like that, man. That's wrong. And that's why we stand up and judge it. I don't think you ought to judge them. It is what it is. It's murder. And it's murder against the Bible. The Bible says it's murder. And that's why we say it. Now, I don't want to hurt any ladies' feelings. Like I said, we've all made some dumb decision, decisions. 
And when you get saved, God forgives you of everything. And God knows who we were before we got saved. And, and so, uh, we got to be careful, but when you do wrong, you're supposed to be judged. Take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter number 16. Matthew chapter number 16. I just wrote these verses down. I want you to see them uh, so you can understand about judging. Matthew 16, 17, because we hear it a lot. I don't think you ought to judge them. Uh, like the lady got pulled over by the police. And, uh, ma'am, you were speeding. I'm going to have to give you a ticket. She goes, well, you just don't know what was going through my mind today and what's all happened to me. And he goes, well, I'm not giving you a ticket according to what was in your mind. I'm giving you a ticket according to what the speedometer says, and you were speeding. doesn't matter about that other stuff. It is what it is because she was driving down the road flying. And it was easy for him to say, you're speeding, I've judged you, and this is true. And, and so, uh, Matthew chapter, or Romans chapter 16, verse number 17, look what it says. Romans 16, 17. Whatever I said, just, just forget it. Go to Romans 16. And don't ever talk back to me again when I'm up here. Listen, I'm a good Christian, Brother Paul, because I've been in churches where the brother didn't give us the right address. You know what I do? I go, I'll correct them. You ever been there where they're like, they tell you something and nobody's there and he's all reading and no, everybody's like, and then you're like, Okay, man, he's a man of God. Let's listen to what he has to say. Amen. Don't judge me. Yeah. I'm trying to help you tonight, amen. He doesn't judging me. Romans 16, verse number 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, look at it now. Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Now, I don't want to get too much into politics, but I have no problem doing it. A lot of deceived people thinking a bunch of stuff that's not true. Right. And, and, and boy, the, the, this neighborhood especially... I mean, you know, we're and, and this year, man, I, I think in November, I'm getting my speaker. I don't want anybody to come but me. I'm getting my microphone, and I'm going to preach for 10 hours out there side of that building about what God wants to vote on. And, and I've, I've prayed about that. I've been thinking about that. Uh, but there's a lot of folks that come up and vote for stuff and, and vote for the, the baby murderers and vote for the, the people that are against Israel, and, and vote for the, the, the sinful agenda that America is going for. And God says, I'm against all those things. Mm -hmm. And so, well, what do you vote for? I vote for the ones that are <laughs> closest to this Bible. Uh, and and, 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 they're, and I'm, we don't know any Baptist preachers that are going to win the president, unless Huckabee does it, and unless maybe Ted, Ted Cruz is... His dad was a Baptist preacher, independent Baptist preacher. Maybe he'd get in. But I'm just telling you, uh, we better be careful. We've got to mark people. And that's what it says. Mark them that cause divisions. And so I don't think we ought to say nothing. Well, God says, mark them. And tell people about them. And warn them. You say, well, you're judging them. No, nope, I'm doing what God says. God says, mark them. And so let's be careful. I don't have any problem marking anybody that goes against this Bible. And I'll stand before God for everything. I will not stand before people who don't like what I have to say. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm trying to be real. Uh, take it out and turn to 1 Corinthians 5. 1 Corinthians 5. I just want you to see some more verses on judging. And we're going to get right into the message. You say, we're not in the message yet? I don't know. You guys are all looking like I'm judging you. Uh, and so I'm going to... Try to make thank you, Jessica. At least Jessica, Jessica's been happy the whole message. And I appreciate that, Jessica. I'm just going to preach to you from here on out. Uh, Rest of them look like a constipated. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Guido said. The most godly person I know is like the King. First Corinthians 5 11. He, he's changed me. He's the most godly person I know. I can't believe he said that from the pulpit. I'm thinking. Well, if he can do it, I mean, surely I can say it. Yes! 1 Corinthians 5.11 But now I have written unto you that ye keep not company. If any man that is called to be a brother be a fornicator, be covetous, an idolater, a railer, a drunkard, 
or an extortioner with such a one know not to eat. So what is that, Brother Burton? Well, there's a man in the Corinthian church that was uh, sleeping around with another man with, with his daddy's wife in this church. And, and Paul said, you know what you got to do with him? You got to put him out. He's got to go. Now, some people believe in 2 Corinthians chapter number 2 that the man got right and he came back to the church. And I believe that could be that man. I'm not sure. But the Bible says, deliver him over to Satan. And he said, well, man, I don't think we ought to judge people. Well, when it comes to the church, we, we, we have to make good judgments. Uh, when it comes to everybody outside and, and folks in our church that aren't church members and stuff, man, we just love them and let God speak to them. I don't try to change nobody at the door. I don't get them in here and say, now, you know you need to clean all this up. I don't do that until they open up the door for me to say something to them or ask me something. And then I tell the truth. And, and listen, I'm thankful that they let me sit in that church for eight months in the Bible Baptist Church while I was still a drug addict, while I was still up to no good, doing my own thing. It's a blessing. Uh, and so I'm not trying to tell you to be nasty to people, but God says if a person's a drunkard, you're to separate from them from the church. Uh, and, and that's important to know that. And, and so I guess, you know, uh, you guys are a tough crowd tonight. First uh, John chapter number 4. 1 John chapter number 4, verse number 1. 1 John chapter number 4, verse number 1. Man, I love everybody. And I really want you to love me. It's a good Bible study, man. We've got to know these things. Thank you, Miss Monique. She is smiling. Praise the Lord. We got two growing. Lisa was smiling, but I don't know what she was smiling about. First John chapter number four, verse number one. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. You know, that's why we have to pray. Guys, listen to me. This whole tolerance thing in America, we're supposed to put up with everything. No, we're not. Right. Man, we're supposed to take a stand according to the right. Word of God. Right. We're not to be nasty. And, and, and man, I know right. I'm a tough pastor, and I understand that. But boy, you ask my father, you ask Kara where she went to Bible college before she met me. Brother Gomez makes me look like a cream puff, but he built a great church, and he told just like it was supposed to be told, and people got get, get under that preaching, and it helps them. Hey, listen to me. We are supposed to be careful, and we're supposed to make judgment. Now, what God was saying here was saying, look, you are supposed to judge in certain spots, because the Bible tells us all those statements. Well, look at this. Turn your Bibles to, uh, look at verse number, Matthew 7, 6. Let me just skip ahead real quick. Matthew 7, 6. Look what he says. In the same context. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye pearls before swine, because they trample under their feet and turn again and rend ye. Now, do you think God, Jesus, is talking about dogs and pigs? He's not. He's talking about unholy things. A dog will eat a steak, and turn around and eat its own vomit. It's a despicable animal. You see, you like dogs? I do, but they'll eat anything. A pig will eat anything and waller in mud and refuse and all kinds of nasties. One of the nastiest animals on the face of the earth is a pig. You say, well, do you like bacon? I love bacon. Uh, and, and, and so uh, God's saying, he's not telling us about the animals, he's saying, be careful to get holy people around unholy people. That's what he was saying. Look, look. Don't, don't, don't let them in the church. Don't, don't let them sit there and, and ruin the church and become church members until God is ready for them to be church members. And God cleans us all up, and He does that. And I'm just telling you, we all move at a different pace, but as long as we're moving towards God, God's changed a lot of lives in this church. And, and so He says... Look, judge and not. And then in verse 6, it looks like he said, wait a minute, judge. So in the same context, he tells us not to judge. Well, why does he tell us not to judge? Well, let's get into it. Verse number 3. Verse number 2. For with ju what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Hey, if you judge people with a critical spirit, you're going to be judged with a critical spirit. 
And however you treat them, you're going to be treated back. And God wants us to treat people right. Uh, and, and so when, when people, or if you're a member of this church and you get out of line, it is my job and it's your job to say, hey, brother, we need to really think about this. But to a person that gets saved and, and comes to church here and, and wants to live for the Lord's learning how, we're not to judge them. We're not to be nasty to them. We're not to do anything to them. We'll let God grow them. And we better be careful because sometimes when we become Christians and we get a little older than Christians, we start looking down our nose at people and think, I can't believe that guy's sleeping on the back row and he stinks. Well, he's a drug addict. They got lost in heroin and can't get off. And we're his only hope. How, we ought to be fighting over him at the end of the service and saying, brother, can I go buy you something to eat? Because he'd say, man, those people down there, they loved me. They were good to me, even though I stuck. He knows he stinks. And so that's what he's saying. Don't judge them because you'll be judged right back. And then look what verse 3 says. Or that was, no, yeah, verse 3. And why beholdest the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye? Now, let me tell you what a beam is. It's a big old giant tree that would hold up a ceiling uh, in a house back then. We'll tell you what a moat is. A splinter. Just a little splinter. And he says, what are you judging that little splinter in Edo's eye? When you've got a stinking tree blocking your view and you can't even see right. And listen to this. They're both made of wood. So we both have a problem and I have the bigger problem. And God is telling the disciples, listen guys, let's be careful now. You, I don't know if you remember this, but Jesus went into one of these towns and they wouldn't listen to him. And James and John said, Lord, why don't you just call fire down from heaven like Elijah did and kill him? And God says, you guys don't even know what spirit you're of right now. You guys are wrong thinking like that. They come to kill these people. And, and so that's what happens when we have our own stuff. Listen, I, I find myself often uh, correcting people and, and, and thinking, man, they ought to be doing better. And then thank God, the Holy Spirit of God says, Burton, what about this? Talking to me. And what about this? And what about this? And what about this? And then I'm like, well, good night. That person needs to help me get better. I don't believe I can't help them. And I said, Lord, I'm sorry. And I usually call the person and say, man, I love you and I'm praying. We'll work it out. Don't worry. I was a little hard on you. Should have been a little nicer to you. Hey, God says, man, look, don't try to judge people when you've got your own problems. And you got a giant tree in your eyes, and you're looking at that little splinter in their eyes, and you're thinking, man, they got the problem. And that's how we become, folks. Even with each other. Thinking things about each other and our families and, and how we think it should go here and what we think should have happened in little incidents and different things. And if we're not careful, we'll say, you know, th those folks or that person or this. And why don't you just step back and think about who you are? You know, they say when you point at somebody, be careful, you got three more pointing back at you. And, and so that's what God's saying, man. Listen, we have a right to judge sometimes. But we can't judge with pious attitudes at people and, 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 and mark people in our minds that, that, that with a nasty attitude and, and with a bad spirit in our mind, our, our hearts with them. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, that little splinter out of your eye, and I got a, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. You got a giant tree. God says, you're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. Oh, that, thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly thee cast out the mote of the brother's eye. And, and listen, I'm just going to be honest with you guys, I always am, and, and, I say, Lord, and I got so many problems. In it. And God says, Well, Burton, you're going to have to help them at the same time. I, Burton, I can't wait for you to be perfect to help them. And, and I feel like God says that, man. And I say, Well, Lord, you know, uh, this message, oh, man, I, I've done it a bunch of times. I've done all this a bunch of times to people. 
But I'm the mouthpiece, and God's got to speak to us tonight. And God's got to tell us, man, be careful. Whatever stage you're in in your Christian life, man, if you're not careful, you'll get a pride issue, and some things will go on, and you'll think, man, they should have done this, and they need to be doing that, man. Be careful, because that just means something's in your eye. Calls them a hypocrite. But then he says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before the swine, lest they trample under their feet and uh, turn again and rend you. What's he doing there? He's giving them a stern warning, a, a big warning. He, he's telling them, Look, be careful who you're hanging out with. Don't judge people, but. Don't be gullible. Do you understand that? Don't judge them, but when it is what it is, be careful there. Don't, don't get around the dog that returns to its vomit. Don't get around the, 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 the sow that wallers in the mire. Peter said it like that in 2 Peter. Don't get around the, 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 the sow, which is a, uh, a female pig. Don't get around that when it wallers in the, in the mud and, and all that, man. You're, you're going to have a discerning spirit. Don't get around unholy things. Don't let the TV tell you how to think. Don't let uh, somebody up at the, 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 the government tell us how we're supposed to think. The Bible tells us how to think. Have discerning spirit. Lord, is it really wrong for this thing to play a parenthood thing? Ask God. And look what he says. Have a discerning spirit about these things. If you're going to judge, have a discerning spirit. Don't get around unholy people. And then he says it. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Now, each time I've heard a lot of preachers get up and say, If you just ask, he'll give it to you. If you just knock, he'll answer. And if you just seek it, he'll show it to you. That's not what that passage is saying. He's saying when, when you need to know how to discern between evil and good, and you need to know who to judge or who not to judge, ask God. Ask God what to do. Lord, what is this stuff going on over here uh, with, with our country? What is this uh, with these folks? What do I do, Lord? What do I do, Lord? And the Bible says if you'll ask Him, He'll answer you. He'll tell you. And if you'll seek Him, He'll show you. And if you'll knock, He'll open up everything to you. That's because as saved people, we've got the Holy Spirit of God inside of us. Just like we all know when we do wrong. We all know it. You don't have to come to me and say, well, Pastor, you think this is wrong? No, you know it's wrong. Because we got the Holy Spirit in us, and even when we weren't saved, we knew when we were doing wrong. But when it comes to this stuff, man, I don't know what's right and what's not right. God says, why don't you just ask me? Why don't you ask me and I'll tell you what's right and what's not right. I'll show you from the Word of God what's right and what's not right. And, and folks, I'm not talking about being nasty with people, but I'm telling you, we are different. We are the church, man. This is God's place. And, and listen, what benefit do I got uh, telling you all this besides just hoping you stand before God one day and be able to have a good judgment seat with Him, man? That's what we're doing. We're trying to build a church here that brings God glory. And to understand who to judge and not to judge is what God wants us to do and wants us to understand. Then in verse 8, verse 9, I'm sorry, God just kind of gives us some reassurance here. After He tells us to seek it, then He gives us some reassurance here. Now this verse lines up a lot with what I tell you and I often say, you love your kids? And you say, yeah. I said, well, do you think you love your kids more than God loves them? He's the one that taught you how to love kids. We're made in the likeness and image of God. The reason we love our kids is because we have what God put inside of us. And here's what God says. Look what it says. What man is there of you whom if his son asked bread will give him a stone? Ain't no, nobody in here has a kid. And your kid says, Daddy, I'm hungry. And tell you something to eat and you give him a, a rock. He said, you, you wouldn't do that. It says, and if he asks for fish, you give him a serpent. Son, you want, you want a snake? Well, I'm, I'm going to give you a, a, a serpent to bite your lips off. You, we wouldn't do that. Right? And, and it's just simple. The Bible's simple. If ye then being evil. What is it about? Who's evil? We are. If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give you good things 
to them that ask him. And then look what he says. Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do even so to them, for this is the law of the prophets. It's called the golden rule. Treat people like you want to be treated. And so the whole verse, the whole 12 verses, or however many there was there, really goes together. Don't judge people. Uh, be careful, because if you judge people, they're gonna, you're going to get judged. And, 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 and listen, you've got to get the beam out of your eye, man, before you try to help other people. But be careful. Don't be around swine and dogs and unholy people, because that's not going to help you. Uh, but if you need to, just ask me to help you to judge. And ask me if you should do this. And ask me if you should do that. And ask me what's right and what's not right. And, and listen, if you are, if you being evil, being a human being, and being sin built, built with flesh that has sin in it, know how to give your kids good stuff, how much more shall your father give you something? I, I'll really help you and I'll give you exactly what you need. And so, folks, that's reassuring stuff, man. We're in a day and age when to do right is called wrong. Yep. I mean, you think about it now. You, you think where we're at? This is a day. It is craziness. To, to live a, in 1950, it was, you know, they were against sin. People didn't work on Sundays. Uh, there were no baseball teams on Sundays. They was in church with God. And they weren't all perfect. I know that. But there was some respect. And today... Little leagues meeting on Sundays and, and, and all that garbage and, and, and people don't, you know, they, they want to drink and, and do this. And me, Emily, and uh, uh, Hector were at Wawa the other night at the church and this, I gave a guy a track and he goes, man, you just come from seeing the Pope? And I said, no. And, and I'm praying about what to say. I don't want to hurt the guy. And he goes, well, he just blessed me down there. And we just looked at each other and I thought, that's nuts. And, and man, he's out there carrying on, living a sinful life, doesn't care no more about God, thinking that the, the ravening wolf in the sheep's clothing has done something for him, when all it is is a business, the, one of the biggest businesses in the world, the Catholic mm -hmm. Church, for their money. Uh, they go to Mike's grandmother, still, she ain't been in that church in years. They go to her and ask her for her tithes. He goes, by the ask her, are you going to give? Told her if she came to our Easter service a couple years ago, she was out of the church. I mean, they're, they're disgusting. And, and, and God gives us discernment on that. And listen to me. God wants to help us all this time. Man, we're in a rough time. But if we just ask Him, Lord, what do you want us to do? Now, now listen to me. I'm human just like you are, okay? So, so you know, but I, I am a lover of people. And He said, well, you're tough on us, man. I love you. That's why I'm tough on you. Uh, and that's why I want to tell the truth to you. And I don't want to mess around. I want you to wreck your life because I was afraid to tell you something because you might leave. I want to tell you the truth. And, 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 and I ain't got hair on my tongue, do I, Ito? <laughs> Ito said that to me one day. I thought, what does that mean? But I'm still trying to figure out what that means. But, <laughs> and listen, God says we can go to Him and ask Him for discernment whether we judge or not judge. We don't judge the down and out people, man. We've never, we, I've never taught that or believed that. Never. I don't judge a person who just gets saved that know nothing about the Bible. But if I got a person who's been in church for five or six years and knows to do right and starts going off the edge, you know what I'm doing? I'm going to go over and say, "Hey, you messed up. You got. To, well, don't judge me. No, we have to, man. We love you, my kids." Folks, if you ever see my kids, get, hey, we're going to grow together, all of us. My kids are going to grow up with your families, and you're going to help me raise my kids. If you ever see my kid getting ready to do something stupid and hurt himself, I hope to God you tackle them, grab them, and make them stop. Because I love them, and you love them too, and I would do that for your kids. But the whole point of the message was we're living a bad day, a trying time, and if we need to get some, some, uh, some discernment. We do it with God and not with the swine and not with the dogs and not with the people at our jobs that don't believe in God, not with the people that are in the false religions and, and killing people and, and not with people that, that don't want to live for Him but think they're living for Him. None of that. We get it all from the Lord and we pray and ask God to help us. And, and that's the time we live in, man. We need it more and more than we ever have. He says, ask and, you, and you'll get it. And seek it and you'll find it and knock and I'll open it up to you. And so whatever it is that you're thinking today, you know, I, I, early in my Christian life, I used to think, this is what I used to think, Lisa, I used to think, 
how could we be perfectly right and everybody else be wrong? So I used to think, man, how can we really be right and everybody else wrong? How did the right person to having to knock at my door with all these false religions and the right one came? And so I thought, well, there's no way it's all right. There's no way. And can I tell you, I've studied my Bible. I've studied preaching. I've heard some preachers say some things I do not believe. But doctrinally, I've not heard anybody really get up, cut up on stuff I don't believe doctrinally. And I think, man, you know what? Here's what I think about our church and about that Bible. I believe we are 100% right. 100%. If I didn't believe it, I wouldn't do it, wouldn't preach it, wouldn't do anything with it. I believe we've got what God had in the New Testament. And guys, listen to me. But Paul will attest to this from the Cordell and, uh, and, and even uh, Monique and them and, and, and different ones. Listen, there's a lot of preachers that will not get up and tell people that they've messed up. And they'll just sit in that church and the Spirit of God will leave the church and then they'll just have a social gathering. And ever since we've been here, I say, Brother Paul, this is what he says to me all the time. I say, Brother Paul, did your dad ever do this, this, this? He goes, nope. And I'm not putting his dad down. He said, Burton, I don't know anybody that's ever been a pastor like you. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, I'm probably all wrong. He'll say, no, I think we got it right, man. I think we're telling people like the Apostle Paul did and trying to have a real deal of church. And listen, it's growing. It's doing well. We're all growing as a Christian. We're not a legalist. I'm not trying to force rules on you. I'm trying to force that Bible on you and let you figure out what the rules are in the Bible and let God work on you. Uh, and so... That's a good discerning spirit, the Holy Spirit being in our lives gives us. But don't get burdened down with, with what other people are saying to you and get tired of fighting for what's right and give in and lose it all because you just didn't want to discern and you, were not, you, you didn't mind being around all the unholy swine and dogs and you didn't want to ask God to help you. And God says, if you'll ask, I'll help you. I'll take care of it. And it'll be just fine. And that's what we need to do. Let's all bow our heads and close our eyes. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Maybe God spoke to you tonight. Maybe you're going through. Maybe you're not. You know, I don't know what the message was tonight.